All right, let's uh, let's continue right where we left off in the last uh, video, where we already had this uh, logo made. What I'll do is I'll increase the stage size a little bit, and yeah, we'll just put that over there. Uh, what I did though between the videos is I made uh, separate elements out of uh, pretty much everything. So basically, you've got your uh, basically just the stroke uh, that we put around the letters. That's separate. Uh, this is separate. That's separate, and then we've got two symbols down here for um, the bottom part of that. And what we'll do is we'll take a look at some of the options uh, that you get over here in the properties panel. Uh, and uh, I think, hopefully, what we'll end up with is something even cooler than what we've got. Uh, so w w one thing you could do is uh, just and this uh, the color effect option has been here since basically the beginning of the program. Uh, you can set the style, and uh, that'll give you uh, some different coloring options. You can see you can do stuff like this, you know, play around with the reds, blues, stuff like that, greens. Uh, then you've got kind of an advanced version of the tinting, uh, which gives you, which throws in the alpha option over here. And then you can see you've got a few more uh, panels for adjusting uh, the RGB. All right. Uh, what I would probably do with this, though, is, as I was messing around between videos, is I noticed this actually looks kind of cool if you take the um, just the alpha down slightly so you can sort of see behind to uh, the, uh, the symbols that we've got uh, underneath there. So in that case, I'd say less is probably more. And then, yeah, brightness, it's, it's doesn't, it deals with the brightness, right? Not that, not that fun. Uh, display, you can get some interesting th things happening over here as well. So, um, and usually what I'll do is I'm, if I'm playing around with the display is I'll just set one of them. I'm sorry, the blending options. I'll set one of them and then I'll uh, just press down, uh, the down button on the keyboard and I'll just kind of toggle through and more graphic programs could really benefit from um, having this option where you can just kind of thumb through things like this. <laughs> Photoshop, you're one of them. Uh, yeah, and that ad that kind of makes does some interesting things over there. Hard light. Um, probably in a case like this, I'd just end up going back to the, the normal blending. Uh, render, caches, bitmap. Uh, I don't really mess around with those two option, basic options. It uh, essentially just kind of makes the... Um, the uh, the image, the vector are become uh, like treated like a bitmap, and I'll say no more about that because I can't think of a good example of when, the last time I dealt with that. Uh, filters, these are always fun ones, but uh, you do have to have a, a, a movie clip in here to, uh, to work with them. So if you had uh, this set to being a graphic uh, for your symbols, you just can't do it. Uh, but you know, it's kind of a tried and true one here is always a nice little uh, drop shadow. This. Uh, this always looks good on letters. So take the distance out just a little bit and take the strength down. Now one kind of problem I've got uh, with the uh, with this particular drop shadow, or really just it's a problem with the shape, is that I don't have the, the interior of this colored in, but that's also what's kind of giving us this fun little look inside of the, um, you know, we can see through there. So I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna uh, change that. I could easily just go through and fill that in fill each letter in. Uh, instead, I'll just make sure that the distance doesn't veer too far off from the, um, you know, the edge of the, of the letter over there. But even when it does, it's not the worst thing in the world. But uh, yeah, so you've got your, you've got your, uh, the blurring that you can mess around with here. If you don't want these to always be the same thing, you can uh, uh, toggle this off over here on either one of these. And then that makes it so you can blur more on the X or more on the Y. Your strength, that's kind of obvious, you know, when you have this uh, up, at 100, that's just going to be full opacity. When you start taking it down, it uh, makes it, uh, uh, you can see through it more. Uh, the quality, a lot of times I'll set this to high. Um, it's almost to some extent, it's a little frustrating that they even have that be an option. Um, considering, I, I mean, I get why they had it uh, to begin with, but, uh, you know, I think now with most people just using this for the, the graphic reasons, not so much for the uh, Flash player. Um, yeah. Uh, inner shadow, that's a fun one. We could look at that in a second. We're not going to see it over here uh, really with this particular shape. Uh, you can also go and, and use hide objects. This is kind of a fun one. So you can actually hide the, uh, the original uh, vector artwork that you're using for the filter. And a lot of the, the filters have that option. And then color, obviously, you know, I can make this a, a blue shadow if I wanted to, blue drop shadow. And, and all the other colors. It doesn't have to just be blue. Um, all right, now let's look at, uh, here's a good example. So I've got the, um, 
uh, I've got that uh, that outline shape over here. Now watch what happens if I go and I add a glow filter to this. Already, even just with the default red, uh, I think it looks a lot cooler. I would probably go with uh, a different color other than red, though. So I'd probably spend some time <laughs> kind of winding through the dial here, but I'd probably end up with uh, some sort of darker color inside of there. Maybe take the strength down just a little bit. But I do think that that adds a kind of a nice little effect outside of that uh, you know you're really not seeing it on the um the out you're really not getting the outer glow in the sense that that exists but obviously if you if you pull that off you you can see that in there uh and then yeah all the kind of normal uh, options apply over here there is an inner glow but that doesn't uh doesn't really work too well on that one um although there there's definitely times where an inner glow does make sense so for example let's just say you had um here let me what happened there get rid of that so let's say you had something like this. Let's make it into a symbol. Add the glow to it. So, all right, now that's obviously an outer glow. Bump that up a little bit. And then I go over here to the inner glow, and then you can see what it's doing. It's, it's uh, you know, at times, at times you do want it. And all uh, right, uh, what filters haven't we talked about over here? Let's see, can we do one on this shape over here oh actually no here's a good example so i've got two versions of the of the the black underneath here right so i've got that one that's got the drop shadow on it drop shadow on it let me mess around with the one that doesn't have any filter applied to it and what i'll do is i'll set the beveling on this and uh probably the blurring down to either two or one maybe and I'd lock those back together again. Uh, and then take the strength down a little bit so it's not so obvious. But uh, let's zoom in a little bit so you can kind of tell what's going on. And probably bump up the quality to high. The distance, I would go down to either probably two or one. So again, I don't want to overdo it with this effect. And it's a little hard to see it right now with that background. But... You know, when you're zoomed in on this, there are there are some cool things, cool effects that are happening with that. And um, again, you kind of get it. Another one of these cases where you got to get the angle just right on it. But uh, when it works, it can work really well. I feel like maybe even take the strength up on that some. So now you're sort of getting this nice little side light. Uh, you know, kind of a 3D effect to it off to the side. So. Yeah, pretty cool, huh? I wonder what Knockout would look like. Ooh, interesting. Yeah, that is actually kind of interesting because now it gives it kind of this glassy look on the outside of it. So, hmm. Probably wouldn't stick with it, but not seeing. I don't like it. Uh, okay, and then in terms of what else we got to talk about here? And, and uh, yeah, I should point out, you can you can add as many filters as you want on here. Uh, gradient glow and gradient bevel, they're, they're kind of just basically what they say. They, it, it's similar to the regular glow, but with, the, with that gradient option in there. And, uh, and really, yeah, and the same thing is true for that gradient bevel as well. Adjust color. Now, this is a fun one. Let's do this. Let's, um, so I'm going to go and I'm gonna, just going to grab everything that I've already done, right, except for this backing part over here. I'm going to hit F8 on this. And uh, then I'm going to play around with uh, just adjusting the colors on it. So, uh, you know, you can bump up the brightness. You can take the contrast up. That can look cool at times. You can mess around with the saturation on it. And then you can kind of just spin the wheel on the hue to see if there's a, kind of a variation on what you've been doing that you uh, particularly like, right? And a lot of times if I mess around with the hue, sometimes I'll, I'll go, well, yeah, I guess I kind of want to see what that would look like as blue. But uh, I'll, I'll take it back off again, and then uh, I'll go mess around with the advanced settings. So at that point, you know, you, you actually get, I think, some better options for, let's see, and I'm not really proving my point. Here we go. So you get some better options for adjusting things. Although that's really just taking away everything, huh? So that's a, yeah. Well, you get the idea. <laughs> Purple and blue is not really what I wanted out of that. Uh, so let's back all the way out of there. There we go. Uh, here, just take that off. 
And uh, you can copy and paste these filters. Uh, so, you know, if I, if I find one, let me just break apart this again. So if I find one that I really like and I want to apply it to something else, uh, I could go over here and it's getting cut off, but you can see you've got copy all filters uh, as an option. Or if you've got this one selected, you can go over here to copy selected filter. And then you can obviously go and you can paste that filter onto uh, something else. You can even save some of these as uh, presets too. That's... Uh, you know, so if you if you find you're doing the same filtering over and over again, that is an option. And if you do have a bunch of filters applied at once, obviously you can fold these up, but you can uh, then you can just take some of them off. You know, if you're just kind of trying things out, so you can toggle the vis visibility on or off. Uh, so yeah, they, they kind of thought of everything with filters. I just wish that uh, these could be applied to uh, graphic clips as well. And uh, do, 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 do. is there anything else we should talk about? Uh, I think we've covered it. Oh, well, 3D positioning. Yeah, you know, this kind of goes back to us playing around with the, the 3D transform tool and the 3D rotation tool way back when, when we started this series. So there's, um, and you know what? Let's, let's put this into a symbol. We'll, we'll see what we can do here. So, I don't know. <laughs> Well, if you keep your eye on it, you can see that uh, it is moving the X, Y, and, and Z over here, right? So it's playing around with some of that stuff. Uh, when you do that, and here's, uh, yeah, you got these options as well. Let's see. Yikes. Well, it's a little back to the future-y, isn't it? Um, but uh, yeah, yeah, so, you know, it's... Uh, it's there if you want to go that route and use it, but uh, I don't know. Maybe a little too on the nose for me. Not subtle enough. Okay, all right. I'll see you guys in the next one of these videos.